These grim fan theories might make you change the channel. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark theories about Nickelodeon shows. Fetch up, Arnold. It's just a parents tournament weekend. It's for kids and their parents. And y you and Grandma are great and everything, but you're not actually my parents. For this list, we're looking at the bleakest fan theories that have been conceived about Nickelodeon's original cartoons or live action shows. <laughs> Number 10. Post-Apocalyptic Avatar – Avatar The Last Airbender Avatar Aang saved the Earth Kingdom from destruction, but was he too late to stop the apocalypse? One theory suggests an apocalyptic event occurred before his birth. The proof of this disaster lies with Avatar 1. Despite living almost 10,000 years before Aang, their settings and weapons look relatively similar. For comparison, Avatar Korra was surrounded by steampunk technology around 70 years after Aang saved the world. An apocalyptic event could explain the lack of progress between Wan and Aang's eras, and the series' hybrid animals. With all the adult themes this franchise has explored, an apocalypse is a depressing possibility. Number 9. Danny Fenton's Coma – Danny Phantom The opening of Danny Phantom shows us that Danny Fenton got his ghostly powers from an accident with one of his parents' machines. There was a great big flash of things to change. His molecules got all rearranged. According to one theory, the device did more damage than we thought. Instead of developing superpowers, Danny fell into a coma after the accident. The ghosts he fights represent aspects of his personality. For example, his arch enemy, Vlad Plasmius, symbolizes Danny's resentment towards his parents for the accident. I could train you, teach you everything I know, and all you'd have to do is renounce your idiot father. And speaking of his parents, their fights against Danny's ghostly form represent their debate on whether they should pull the plug on their comatose son. Where is he? Where's our son? What have you done to our boy? <laughs> I am your boy. Is this why Danny's catchphrase is, I'm going ghost? I'm going ghost! <laughs> Number 8. Steve's Drug Problem – Blue's Clues In the bright and imaginative world of Blue's Clues, the whimsical Steve is friends with inanimate objects like Mr. Salt, Mrs. Pepper, the mailbox, and, if this theory is correct, hallucinogenic drugs. In each episode of the show, Steve jumps into paintings and chats with household items. Side table drawer. I just love Blue's Clues. Ooh. Here it is. The theory states that both activities are just a result of his intense drug hallucinations. Furthermore, the children's voices that we hear in the background represent either a child or a younger relative that Steve is constantly neglecting due to his substance abuse. So we gotta find a... Paw Right, because that's the first... Clue! Yeah. If this theory is true, then Steve's exit from the show could mean he entered rehab. Number 7. Fallout – Spongebob Edition SpongeBob SquarePants There are some SpongeBob fans who believe that the main character's flaws are meant to represent the seven deadly sins, but others think there's a more scientific explanation for their bad habits. For doing absolutely nothing longer than anyone else, Patrick! The nuclear testing theory says that SpongeBob and his friends were regular marine creatures until they were mutated by radiation from atomic experiments. Fans noted that SpongeBob's hometown of Bikini Bottom sounds like Bikini Atoll an actual location where the U.S. tested nuclear weapons. In addition, explosive clips of mushroom clouds have appeared several times on the show. Let's eat! Oops. Perhaps things aren't as innocent as they seem near that pineapple under the sea. Number 6. Arnold's True Parents – Hey Arnold! Before the 2017 movie explored the mystery of what happened to Arnold's parents, fans came up with their own solution. The theory suggests that Arnold's grandparents were his true parents. I mean, by bringing your grandma and grandpa's parents? Since you don't have no- Ow! After his birth, they told him that his parents were explorers to hide the truth. Furthermore, Arnold's famous football-shaped head was actually a birth defect. Move it, football head! Hey, Arnold! The one that fits most closely is known as hydrocephalus, a condition that causes fluid to build up in the brain. Since the risk of birth defects can increase among older couples, Arnold's grandparents may have blamed themselves and couldn't bear to tell him about his true parentage. Tell me the real story this time, Grandpa. 
I want to hear what really happened to my parents. Oh, dear. Are you sure, Arnold? Yes. Number five, Cannibal Crabs, SpongeBob SquarePants. Mr. Krabs' arch rival, Plankton, has always wanted to know what makes the Krabby Patties taste so good. Now hand over the secret Krabby Patty formula! The answer may be cannibalism. According to the theory, the legendary burger is made from actual crabs. We've both lost our luster. Mm, so that's what I taste like. Before you say that's a load of barnacles, consider this. There's a noticeable lack of crabs in Bikini Bottom. You know what we say? The only people who don't like a Krabby Patty have never tasted one! The Krusty Krabs menu items, like the kelp fries, are likely made with the same ingredients present in their title. I need a triple Krabby Supreme on a kelp bun with extra sea pickle and, and burn it to a crisp, okay? And the restaurant itself even resembles a large lobster trap, if Mr. Krabs is as money hungry as he seems. Turning his own kind into delicious food makes scary business sense. I warned you! <laughs> Number 4. Crazy Steve's Kidnapping Plot iCarly Drake and Josh featured Miranda Cosgrove and Jerry Trainer as associates Megan Parker and Crazy Steve, respectively. You eat my enchilada! I thought we settled it! You eat my enchilada! I thought we settled this! After that show ended, they were cast as siblings Spencer and Carly Shay on iCarly. One theory suggests this was more than coincidental casting. Why? Does it upset you? Yes! Well, that's why. <laughs> Before the events of iCarly, Crazy Steve murdered Megan Parker's family. He then forced her to move to Seattle and change their identities so they could pass as siblings. I think I can fix a little broken countertop. Carly's web show is her attempt to reach out to people who might recognize and rescue her. This kidnapping theory would explain why Crazy Steve was in a mental hospital in iCarly's spin-off, Sam and Cat. Number 3. Angelica Sees Dead Babies – Rugrats This morbid theory suggests that most of the Rugrats are dead. Angelica supposedly has mental issues that cause her to hallucinate her baby friends. What are you talking about? That's a tree house! In reality, the imagined babies were based on tragic stories she overheard. Her cousin Tommy was stillborn. Angelica imagined Phil and Lila as twins because their mother had to terminate her pregnancy before her child's gender was revealed. The easily frightened Chucky died in an accident, and his stepsister Kimmy was taken away by Child Protective Services. The only real baby is Dill, because the troubled Angelica can't talk to him like she does with her imagined friends. Number 2. Mr. Crocker is hunting Timmy, the Fairly Odd Parents. Mr. Crocker may be more obsessed with Timmy than his fairies. Throughout the Fairly Odd Parents, Crocker constantly suspects that his young student will get him access to fairy godparents. But one theory claims that the fairies are a metaphor for Timmy's innocence and wishes for the future. Crocker wants to steal both by sexually abusing his student. Mr. Crocker, what, what, what are you gonna do to me? In some versions of this theory, Timmy's fairies represent the antidepressants he takes to cope with his teacher's endless pursuit, neglectful parents, and abusive babysitter. Ten-year-old kid, inattentive parent, evil babysitter, pink and green parents and soapbox cars? Oh my gosh! Denzel Crocker must have parents! Although he pretends that his wishes can be granted, the reality is that he's stuck in a cycle of misery. Why don't any of the things I wish for ever become reality? Before we ruin your childhood with our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Get into it. Everybody's crazy. Try it. <laughs> and suddenly it hit him. It wasn't supposed to happen. He wasn't supposed to care. But as the feeling blasted through his heart, he knew nothing could ever be the same. You know Stoop Kid never lets anybody near his stoop. Yeah, I heard he punched a guy just for touching his stoop. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mr. Dink is a Child Predator – Doug On the first day 11-year-old Doug moved to a new house, his neighbor Mr. Dink brought him next door to watch a video. Well, my family's starving and I really need- Well, of course you do! 
It's just a little film we show all our new residents called Bluffington Proud. While it's portrayed as a friendly gesture, theorists believe that this was the first sign that the middle-aged man was a child predator. Throughout the series, Mr. Dink spends plenty of time with Doug. At one point, he even becomes Doug's scoutmaster. Hello, boys. That was so beautiful. Eventually, Dink's inappropriate closeness allegedly drove his preteen neighbor to experiment with drugs that caused vivid daydreams. So every time we see a character like Quailman on screen, it's actually Doug taking a trip away from the sinister Mr. Dink. Just make sure to watch out for Mr. Dink's friend, old Chester. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.